I would like to ask the Treasury Minister if his department will review the financial assistance available to parents with dependent children aged 16 to 20 years suffering with mental health issues. Call the Minister for Treasury, Mr Cannon. Mr President, I thank the Honourable Member for her question. I can confirm there are a number of different benefits which are available to people who suffer from mental health issues and, where appropriate, to their carers. I am not aware of any reasons why these should be reviewed at this time, and indeed Treasury has no specific plans to currently do so. Uh, I am advised that the Honourable Member's question re actually relates to a specific set of circumstances, that is, where a child who has uh, mental health issues has left full-time education but is unable to take up work due to their incapacity. In such circumstances, once child benefit for the child, or perhaps better referred to as a young person, uh, has ended, then the young person would be eligible to claim benefits in their own right, subject to their incapacity for work being certified by a medical practitioner, usually their GP. Subject to any income or capital the young person may have and the residential qualifications being met, they are likely to be eligible for income support. This would be payable to the young person irrespective of their family's circumstances. Income support would continue to be payable to them for as long as they continue to be certified as incapable for work. Anyone in entitled to income support is also exempt from the payment of NHS prescription charges. Now, If the young person's mental health issues are such that they require frequent or repeated help from another person, which may be a parent, of theirs with daily living activities, then depending on the level of help required, they might also be entitled to disability living allowance. And if the person providing that care has to give up or refrain from work, then they might be entitled to a carer's allowance. So in summary, Mr President, I am satisfied that the appropriate assistance is available in uh, the circumstances I've just described. Now, if the Honourable Member for Garth has uh, reason to think otherwise, I would welcome the opportunity uh, to discuss this with her outside of this Honourable Court. Supplementary, Mrs Kane. Thank you, Mr President. I thank the Treasury Minister for that comprehensive reply. Um, could I just query the level of, if, if the young person concerned or others similar have um, personal savings, a savings account perhaps held for many years through childhood, what level of savings would prevent them being eligible to claim their own income support? Thank you. Treasury Minister. Uh, I, I think uh, I'll have to look into the specific uh, detail of that uh, specific question. What I would say to the uh, to the court, to the honourable member, I mean, clearly, a benefit system is, is denied, is, sorry, is is operated um, to try and encompass most of these um, cases. Clearly, uh, the honourable member has a very specific constituency case, uh, and that does need to be dealt with in effectively in, in, by way of a, a, a one to one conversation so I can fully understand the specific circumstances and indeed whether those specific circumstances are more, more broadly applicable and whether there does need to be any change. As I said at the moment I don't have uh, evidence that there's a fundamental flaw in the system but I would encourage the Honourable Member to come and talk to me so I can properly explore this issue with her uh, and ensure that we are giving correct uh, answers relevant to the specific circumstances and then of course you know, I would say to the Honourable Member, if she's not getting this satisfaction, believe this is a broader uh, issue, that she should you know, clearly bring this back to the floor and, and, and put it in the, in the public arena. But I look forward to speaking with her uh, very soon.